Welcome back. Now that we have understood how to manage form state and submit form data, in this video, let's dive into understanding form validation with React Hook Form. React Hook Form supports various HTML validation rules, including required, min length and max length, min max, regex pattern, and more. Let's start with a basic required validation rule for the username field. Back in VS Code, begin by adding the no validate attribute on the form element. This will prevent browser validation, allowing React Hook form to handle the validation of the fields. Next, add the required field validation to the username field. Here's how you can do it. Pass an object as the second argument to the register function. Specify required as the key and the corresponding error message as its value. For example, you can specify username is required. Let's save the file, head back to the browser, and test this validation with the dev tools. It is important to note that validation by default occurs only when the form is submitted. We will explore other validation modes later in the series, but for now, validation on form submission is adequate. Click on Submit, and if the validation fails, you can see the validation type and the corresponding error message in the dev tools. Error type is required. Message is username is required. Form validation with React Hook form is working as expected. I want you to pause for a minute and add the same required field validation to the channel field as well. Let me know in the comment section if you were able to get it right. Next, let's take a look at another HTML validation, which is pattern validation. Let's ensure that the email input is in the correct format. Here's the syntax. As second argument to the register function, specify an object, but this time we set key to pattern and the value is an object. The object contains two properties, value, which is the regex pattern for email, and message, which is the string that needs to be surfaced back to the user when the pattern matching fails. Invalid, email format. Let's save the file, head back to the browser, and test it out. Enter email as test, and submit. We should see the pattern validation type and the corresponding error message. Both required and pattern validations are working as expected. Now you can leave the required validation as it is, but if you want consistency across the rules, you can change the required validation to an object as well. We specify value as true and message. Username is required. Submit the form. A form validation kicks in and updates the form state with the right error type and error message. Of course, this DevTools feedback is only for us during development. To improve the user experience, we need to surface this error message to the end user. Let's explore how to do that in the next video.